line here. What a punt from Anthony Barella. He ties the lead all square with Eagle McMahon through 13 holes. Likely be a drop in for par, and he can close out his first ever major. Oh my goodness, Final, what just happened on 16? Hello and welcome back to the exciting conclusion of the 2023 Finnish National Disc Golf Championships. This is round 4 front 9 MPO lead card coverage at Mukala Disc Golf Park with only 18 holes remaining and a stacked roster of very talented players. They will compete for those coveted podium positions and have an opportunity to cement their legacy as top Finnish players of the year. I'm Connor Wood and with me Elias Lukanen. What is up, Connor? What is up, viewers? And welcome to this exciting battle as we take a look at the players. We have Niklas Antila, who is the reigning Finnish champion from last year. He has a pretty sizable lead over second place and looking to hold on to that in this final round. You see the man holding second place here, Rasmus Saukorippi. A great command of both the forehand and backhand, tons of power, and with a very promising round in round three, has worked his way into that solo second position. And third on the card, talking about a lot of power, Christian Kuoksa, also known for being one of the longest and most effortless players to throw the disc in the entire country of Finland. He's been also putting well throughout the tournament, as you saw that 57% circle 2 putting. And rounding out our lead card, Puru Jotsun. Some incredible performances from him and not his first time here on MDG coverage. Also an exciting player and known to have some great skills. Happy to have him joining us, rounding out what makes for an incredible card. And our incredible card will start off the round with a pretty easy hole. Hole 1 is only 84 meters. It plays as a basic overstable approach disc hyzer. You can go with a higher or a lower line, whatever you feel most comfortable with. The most difficult part about this hole is that these last two birch trees on the left make it a little bit difficult to swing your hyzer all the way to the basket. Oftentimes players are left with uh, some inside the circle longer putts also that will be long and left coming into play super quickly Niklas will get us started here on the final day the first throw Really, here is the moment that you compose yourself for your round if you have not done so already. And uh, not to take eyes off the action as Niklas is going with a Discmania Mutant there. Very nice looking line. And what a start to the final round. He's inside the circle just five or six meters away. Rasmus, an Innova player, has really been leaning on his Toro for these situations, both backhand and forehand, able to trust the stability of that disc. Slightly less overstable than some of the comparison brands approach discs, but still with a great integrity to that hyzer angle there. And as you see him actually hit the base, really putting a little bit of risk in there, battling those two trees, but firing through beautifully and absolutely pins it. And Christian, we mentioned that he's one of the furthest throwing players in Finland. And uh, good to note that actually earlier this year, he was doing his mandatory Finnish military service. So had very little practice in the off-season and still showing off some great performance 
in this tournament and he's also inside the circle there with a nice safe shot. And Puru now has worked his way to 15 under, averaging 5 down in the first 3 rounds. He's just one stroke behind Christian here. And Puru is also another player that shows up really well on the big stage. He was already on the lead card two years ago in the Finnish Nationals and he has absolutely parked the first hole. Even getting some tickle off the branches of the first birch tree. A couple of good breaks for both Rasmus and Puru that both went super inside. As we see Christian now looking to get us started, unfortunately out the left side from pretty manageable circle one distance, potentially the nerves of the final day on lead card coming into play. But this man here, stone cold, Niklas starting with the almost to be expected birdie from him at this point on this hole. And Niklas looking very sharp with a stylish shirt and what looks like to be a pretty fresh haircut. Rasmus also here with a great start to the round. You really want to birdie this first hole. And I'm sure Christian, you know, it's not ideal to miss the first putt here. And I'm sure, I'm 100% sure that he knew that if he takes a par, he's going to lose strokes on the card, especially with these players that are hungry for most of them their first Finnish championship and for Niklas what would already be a third. Moving on to the first par 4 on the course. Hole 2, it's a pretty soft par 4 of the tier, just trying to lay up either a forehand or backhand hyzer to the short part of the fairway before the OB between the first part and the green on this hole. The green is surrounded by OB, the most room is found on the short side, but the biggest opening to park the basket is on the right. So most players going for that right hand backhand hyzer on the approach. Uh, really off the tee, it doesn't matter that much where you are on the fairway, but you can kind of choose some of your distance and angle of the tee by pushing either a longer or shorter on this fairway. Absolutely. This first shot really just a placement and quite a generous landing zone. You don't need to push that OB line straight ahead, so... Players really just want to bite off as much as they can while retaining absolute safety. As Rasmus does push it a little bit, both long and to the right, he sits safely though. That will be a pretty prime position to attack the green from. That upper right side opening up the gaps in the trees just a little bit. And from Puro here, a very wide and steep hyzer angle. But trusting the stability, he comes right back in as well. Yep. First shot here is really simple and only the second one is really where we're likely to see some differences as everybody is safe off this tee shot and uh, the approach it's not very difficult but you do have some risk if you for example leave it out too far to the right you might not even advance to the other side of the OB. We have Christian up first with a great shot, just very smooth delivery up to the green and a few steps outside bullseye there, hopefully leaving him with a putt that can get his confidence back on the green. Puro here pushing it a little bit straighter before the fade and he also finds himself just within bullseye. Two very textbook shots to start. Nice job there and uh, Niklas next up here. I believe going with an FD3 here. Nice low line moving well from right to left. And that is also just inside the bullseye there. Everybody well on the green here. And Rasmus actually going standstill with that halo firebird. Also a nice looking line here. Swinging it very wide. And wow, what a play from our lead card on this hole too. 
Connor, bring me some scoring average. How easy is this hole playing in the final round? Quite significantly, this averaged at 3.51 with 53% of the field securing the birdie as we look to be putting together a star frame for our lead card here with their short putts remaining. Also, almost completely birdies and pars, very few bogeys and absolutely no double bogeys or greater. This was one of the least dangerous holes of the day. And no danger find found by our lead card as Peter will be the last one to tap in their birdie respectively and uh, we're moving on to another pretty simple hole really the first five holes even first seven holes on this course being very birdieable but mostly these first five very little danger and that theme is continuing on hole three here 118 meters playing as a slight turnover shot we might even see a couple of forehands from this card it's either a straight to fading forehand or just the slightest turnover with the backhand difficult thing on this hole is mostly to control that angle whether it's a turnover or a forehand it's pretty easy to turn it over too far to the right As we see some very strong starts from Niklas Rasmus and Puru, all going perfect so far. Christian with that lone missed putt on hole one. We have Niklas continuing his first shots off the tee. We've seen a very similar result from him in previous rounds as he battles towards the out of bounds line, does remain safe, but once again leaving him with an out of circle, slightly uncomfortable range has hit band twice on this elevated basket from a similar range and we'll see if he can look to make that correction on this much more high stakes and high pressure day here and rasmus here what a beautiful look at what his forehand can do went with a nice straight firebird there and he's inside the circle here pretty impressive result for a forehand quite often do we see forehands either being short or fading out to the outside edge of circle one towards the right. It was a great look at the mechanics of his forehand as well. Puru with some great mechanics to the backhand, sliding that one up, a beautiful use of the stability there, flattening it out at the end to ensure that late pushing forwards flight, not getting it overturned. Christian also opting for the forehand shape, getting that soft flex. We see a lot more height from him and a much more common result for the forehand is fading too far to the right and too early. He will also be outside the circle contending with this tall elevated basket. How are the, uh, how is the weather in this final round, Elias, in terms of scoring conditions? The scoring conditions were almost perfect. There was less wind than the other rounds of this tournament. Actually quite significantly less wind, especially towards the evening and the afternoon when this lead card is playing and no rain to speak of nice temperature Niklas here from circle two with a nice looking run he went with a bit of a softer pace on the putter not quite able to make it in but Rasmus here has a chance to get a stroke on Niklas and wow nice Ooh. catch Absolutely solid grab by the chains there. We saw that with a lot of height on the very left side, but enough pace to snag it. And he pulls his disc out with a smile. I think he knows he got away with one a little bit there, but a good putt. Christian securing his putt there for bogey. Did he must have found then OB off the uh, tee shot to the right. I'm not sure, there is not really OB on the right side where he landed, so we'll have to check that as Niklas is stepping in for the par. Nice couple of birdies by the card on this pretty simple hole. Moving on to another one of those, hole 4. Once again a very scorable, very birdieable hole with very little bogey potential. Really the only danger on this one is that OB on the left side. Quite consistently do we see players throwing that nice 
straight shot towards the right side of the fairway and getting that little fade and a skip towards the basket to the left. Trying to avoid that OB left side is the most important thing here. You can go with a mid-range or a fairway driver depending on your power level and your uh, most comfortable speed of throw. Looks like Rasmus is actually going for a gator, which is a long distance for a gator here. I think a lot of these players will opt to disc down given the slightly better conditions with the wind. We see a nice use of the width there from Rasmus, keeping it a little bit right the whole way and firing long, but still within the circle as he looks to continue his perfect streak so far along with this man here. Both of them taking one stroke on the leader on the previous hole. This has a lot of height and Heiser will need to find something to stay safe from OB left. And curls up just in the important moment there. Leaves himself with a pretty reasonable putt as well. Yeah, as the spotter waves the flag in excitement, shout out to all of the spotters here and all of the volunteers, but also this specific spotter, he was out there working all weekend. I saw him during every round. Great to see as Niklas throws a beautiful shot. Once again, that stable fairway driver, I believe either an FD1 or an FD3 there. Perfect angle control. And Christian, probably trying to do something similar. Actually with a significantly more overstable disc, but look at this angle control, as he has got the CTP of the card with that beautiful flex shot. A very solid bounce back for him after the bogey on three will be left with a tap in. Puru with more work to do here. But solid putting stroke as he continues his early streak of perfection and these first five holes all averaging pretty significantly under par. <coughs> As we see the first mistake from Rasmus Saukkaribi. Tough inside the circle miss. He was putting pretty well in the both the second and the third round. But the first round for him was a difficult for putting. And really his driving has been what has given him the chance to be in this position. And that is something to look forward to during this round. How can he manage the nerves on the putting green? Next up, hole 5 here. I believe this might be the shortest hole on the course at only 75 meters. It's a true tunnel shot with those two mandatories early up on the fairway, both on the left and on the right to keep you going straight down the middle. Most players are going for a low, pretty well driven shot. You can throw your disc pretty low and get that skip at the end or just glide it down to the basket. Only 75 meters, so it's pretty short. In the previous rounds we had some headwind on this hole. And looks like the wind is also picking it up a little bit here. Yeah, it's very interesting to see the shot shaping preferences from these competitors in order to hit the tunnel. From Puru there we look to see a soft hyzer release flipping up to flat, but Finding a little bit too much movement to the right early on does not break through cleanly. We've seen from Niklas and a few others more of a soft flex line with a slightly more overstable disc. But he too has done the same. Catching an early right side tree, this shorter par 3, offering a few struggles here today. And one of these shots that is not necessarily technically the most difficult on the course, but very nervy. And we see from Christian the same thing, just a magnet on this right side. That is so surprising. In this final round, 
we have seen this hole being birdied consistently by the majority of the players on our video cards and even Rasmus completing the 100% of the players on this card to kick on the right side Niklas up first for the approach and this is also right Niklas is in trouble of possibly bogeying one of the easiest holes on the course Connor, tell me just how easy was this hole playing today Hole 5, very similar to hole 2, had a half stroke play under par at 2.54. Another hole that over half of the MPO field found the birdie on. So to have effectively no chances here on this lead card, very surprising. And from Rasmus there, quite an unforced error on the forehand approach. Had that extremely low out of the hand and never had the room to glide. Did get a little bit of ground play. Guru there, at least able to pitch up to safety, give himself a stress-free putt. These other players will still need to do some work. And Rasmus first here for the par from outside the circle. Nice looking stroke there, but just coming off low. And wow, that's actually myself there, just picking up my discs from this hole. Not to interrupt the play though, as Christian makes the power putt and very surprisingly gonna pick up strokes on both of our leaders or both of our top two players with that par. Yeah, absolutely. Only 4% of the field finding bogey on hole five in this final round of which both Niklas and Rasmus contribute towards. Quite a surprise, but Every hole here demands your focus, including this one. Definitely including this hole 6, as it is offering a lot of potential for bogeys. It's a long par 5. On the first shot, you're just trying to stay on the fairway. And uh, kind of the similar theme for the second shot as well. First shot is pretty much open, you can throw any shape, most likely a hyzer. But the second shot is kind of a forced hyzer or a flat shot if you're really far down there. And the approach is where most of the difference is made. The approach is pretty tricky. You need a lot of a lot of touch to land on this sloped green with a lot of OB both on the short, right, and long side of the basket. These guys are able to put fairly safe placement shots into the fairway here, but some players do opt to try and get more distance with a faster arm speed and just really throwing it harder i think not many players will lean on any sort of under stability a lot of them will just play the big hyzer but interesting to see how much they choose to bite off we see a d2 in christian's hand both christian and rasmus definitely have the potential to get way down there even in theory this hole could be eagle ball although in tournament play it's not really a realistic option as you can see, Christian there being one of the longest throwers in Finland and still just pitching at overstable chip hyzer with that distance driver there. Niklas a similar line, but this is a little bit inside, possibly gonna challenge the left side OB. But takes a good soft skip there and uh, perfectly safe on the fairway. Sits it down in time. Rasmus now on a little bit of an island in terms of his position on the leaderboard and stroke situation. Six behind Niklas and three ahead, two rather, with that recent bogey on the last hole ahead of Puru. So although there's some pressure behind him, he's really looking to storm ahead. The only player that is currently pushing Niklas potentially, but many holes remaining, anything could happen. There's a lot of separators, particularly on the back nine. A very nice shot from Puru there, shaping beautifully and with good progress down the fairway. Nicely in the middle of the fairway by Puru, it's pretty difficult to, well, it's not, not difficult by any means, but it's easy to either stay on the right side and hit those right side trees, or fade too far left and challenge that left side OB. But Niklas there perfectly pushing the tree line with that overstable hyzer, and he's also gonna be just in perfect position about 80 meters left the basket from there 
just a nice touchy approach. Christian has gone very low with this, not quite giving it the height or finding the huge skip that would provide him with a fairly simple upshot. He will still have the gap on the right, but quite a lot of distance. The later that gap is in the flight, the harder it will be to hit purely. This is Rasmus now trying to set himself up to cross over to the green, and that is a very nice spot to be. Yeah, Rasmus is going to have one of the shortest approaches we have seen on this hole after two. Now Christian here going for a rare gap around the outside left with that forehand. And you can see why it's pretty rare. It's just difficult to get that fade back into the basket with that forehand. Much more often do we see people going for this right side gap where you are flying over out of bounds for the entire way. But if you fade it just a little bit left, as Niklas is doing, you're pretty much safe all the time. Although he did push that left side OB, I would agree that's the more safe of the two lines. Christian potentially just ensuring that if he does find any troubles, he's at least flying over inbounds. This is a hole where, of course, you're still trying to birdie it, but the first one on the 18-hole layout that averages over par, if you do walk away with a 5, it's not too much of a problem relative to the average. Although, especially if you're trying to push these guys so far ahead and with such a significant lead with the holes running out on this final day, I think every hole has to be an attacking one in your mind. A very nice shot from Rasmus. You see the benefit of his distance on the first two shots, allowing him just a short chip-up hyzer with full visibility off the green. Christian giving it the bid into the wind, but we saw his disc elevator up and down, and he is right underneath for a tap in par. And Puder here. This is a bit of a scary putt going towards OB, but he makes it good. Interesting to see, Puder has that very arm-oriented putting style, not really utilizing the legs that much, just kind of bending over and uh, just putting the disc in the basket as Rasmus here makes a great putt for the birdie. And it uh, looks like we might have missed Niklas's putt from Circle's Edge. And it uh, looks like he did miss it, but stayed close. And this is going to be Niklas for par. To lose one, only one stroke to Rasmus. And you see a very thoughtful delivery there. Really took his time, ensuring no slip-ups, despite it being a very short distance. That's the sign of a seasoned professional there, not leaving anything to chance at this critical moment. Both Puro and Rasmus finding a stroke on the leader. And moving on to hole seven. A great hole for stroke swings. Quite often do we see even two stroke swings on this hole. It's a pretty big hyzer for most of these guys. Some people, for example, Niklas has been going for a bit of a straighter flip up hyzer. What you need to avoid on this hole are these two OB bunkers. You need to land your hyzer right in between them and hopefully don't go too far because also there's OB long inside the circle. But it's a pretty natural distance and a natural shape for these guys. They can just take their overstable distance driver, hang it to the right and hopefully take just a small skip at the end. And we see just that there, although a little bit inside for Puru, he does successfully skip over the island into the green. And has found himself a putt from inbounds. Rasmus here with a more traditional width to his hyzer, able to go higher and steeper with his power, but you see not quite able to get it all the way to the green with that shape, had a lot of height and as a result didn't get that same ground play, just dug in and sat fairly close to where it connected. Yeah, I believe Rasmus might have even hit those right side trees with that Halo Firebird. And Christian here, unfortunately, tickling some of the branches, taking just a little bit of speed off the disc. And he has found the OB bunker. 
where he's gonna have a pretty long putt left for the par. So likely to be losing at least one stroke, possibly a couple of strokes to these other guys if they can make the birdie happen. And worth noting as we see two players sneak their way to the right, Niklas looking like he has snuck himself just ever so barely in bounds on the healthy side of that island. Look to be a left to right sort of tailwind. So maybe potentially contributing to those discs getting pushed to the right side tree. We see the result here for Rasmus. Rasmus from outside the circle. Look at that. What a laser putt. He has put it just barely above the cage and the disc had so much spin and speed. He was able to hold on to that height for the entire way. Let's have another look. Look at the straight line. Just beautiful spin. And that is a big moment, putting a lot of pressure on Niklas, who also has a sizable putt left. But Christian here first for the par. Unfortunately, not quite. Just adjacent to Rasmus's lie. You see their flights a little bit different. Christian quite high there and Puru as well, pulling it a little bit out of the hand. Came off to the right side. We'll move to Niklas now. To not lose another stroke to Rasmus after an amazing putt from him. This is no easy putt. And potentially a pivotal moment. As Niklas, just low on the cage, will be tapping in for par. And the stroke difference we see there going towards Rasmus's favor. And here, Christian. Good putt for the bogey. Not the start he was looking for, not the hold score he was looking for, but good composure there. And uh, Niklas with two putting misses in a row from that 10 meter range. Very surprising, usually one of the strongest putters we ever see on coverage. And for some players you might say that it's the pressure of being in the lead position, and it very well may be, but of all the people that could be holding that position, there's very few who have more experience and wisdom as the leader than Niklas Antila, especially in recent history. So I'm sure even though it's a big moment, he is quite comfortable leading and setting the pace. Very true, for sure. And we're moving on to a hole that although Niklas was told to be very comfortable at this moment, does not really favor Niklas, but rather Rasmus and some of these other bigger throwers as hole 8 is an absolute bomb of a par 3. It's 129 meters but so far uphill actually 11 meters uphill playing closer to 150 or 160. Very few players in the field even able to reach this hole. You have either the straight gap or the hyzer which Rasmus has been going for this hyzer route and he actually parked the hole in round 1 with his hyzer. He's going super high here. Look at the power. Just going around all the branches and he has actually even gone long. Wow, what a big drive on this one. And that's very likely going to be a stroke on Niklas as Niklas does not quite have the same arm speed. I'm gonna have to settle for at best a long circle two look here. And Puru actually opting for the roller here, trying to battle up the hill, landing it on the cut angle and getting it up to flat, but finding a tree on its way, unable to make too much progress there. Really incredible shot from Rasmus, one of the best, if not the best, that we have seen on coverage. Nicholas has shown he's able to give himself a chance at the putt, although needing to go with more of a full flex. This one burnt over though, not enough height with that amount of turn. And simply a, a long look at two if he wants to run it, but most likely a three there. Christian as well, able to create that distance on the hyzer. We see him playing the right side gap, asking for it to fade. Does not hit that late tunnel entrance into the green. And will be left with a putt what looks to be about circles two's edge uphill. So although it is a chance, a very difficult one at that. We have Puru up first for the approach. 
Yeah, this is an approach that you can kind of run with the nice backstop behind the basket. Very safe green as Buru has. Give it a bit of a bit of a bit there. And I would almost expect a similar thing from Niklas here. As he looks to be lining up the hyzer gap. Just trying to put it near the basket here. Not the greatest approach, but should be no problem as he's well inside the circle there. Christian with a chance from way down there. Gives it some loft and some spin, but a little bit to the left side throughout the flight. Another very important moment here for Niklas. After some recent putting struggles, this one, very manageable distance. Straight into the band. Wow. As he will tap out here for a bogey. Rasmus securing the tap in birdie. That is a two-stroke swing between first and second place. At a crucial moment in the progress of this tournament. Wow. What a huge mistake from Niklas. On a hole that is rarely bogeyed by anybody on the field. There was a lot of pars on this hole, but... Exactly how many pars was there on this hole? Niklas must be one of the very few bo bogeys, right? Absolutely, there's 87% par with only 6% taking the single bogey and 1% taking a double or more. Once again, Niklas in that very small percentage of players finding the bogey, similar to hole 5. A good putt there for Puru. As we saw, Niklas with a very good start throughout the first four holes, finding three of them, has now gone two over in the last four holes, five through eight. And you have to wonder, obviously Niklas, one of the strongest, mentally strongest players we see, but once Rasmus has tapped this in, the stroke difference is going to be only two, and uh, Niklas also has almost zero momentum over, over Rasmus. So he might be feeling a little bit nervous at this point as the lead is shrinking and the holes are also shrinking as far as fairway width. We're moving to this tight wooded section of the course starting on 9. Very precise high turnover shot. You have to throw something extremely high with a lot of turn, preferably a putter or a mid-range because a regular turnover is not quite gonna cut it for this one if you want to be inside the circle. You need to turn your dri um, drive to the right and also hold the turn all the way, even turn a little bit backwards to the right. That is obviously for the backhand. We also see some high hyzer forehands on this one. Rasmus being the best example because he has a lot of power behind this firebird that he's throwing. Yeah, a lot of players would not be able to go with this degree of height and get the distance on full hyzer. As he gives his chance at the tunnel, unclear how much progress was made there, although look to hit the initial gap, did not get much further than that. We see Puro shaping the more traditional backhand with that soft turning flight. We see it get into the Anheuser and hold it just a little bit too straight. I think on that, that soft hyzer release, his disc turned over slowly. Had he started it out with a slightly flatter angle, would have held it all the way. Just a matter of a few degrees on the angle here, on such a precise line and shot that this hole de demands, is the difference between making it to the green or not. And Christian here with a beautiful looking shot. And once again getting that slight fade out, but he's there within putting range I believe in circle 2 which is already a great result on this hole very rarely do we see people in circle 1 but Niklas trying to be one of them with a beautiful looking turnover here and hits the very last tree on the right side that was looking perfect up until the very last tree on that right side might cost him a single stroke as he's gonna have a long putt left now and Rasmus far enough to have a putt himself, but that will leave him with a lot of distance. You saw the height that he released that at, pretty much in line with the basket from the beginning on a soft hyzer angle. Never had the space on the right to fade towards the basket, and 
for the majority of the flight, we see Buru there giving his bid from down the hill. I think very palpable tension in the air at this point. Nicholas, so close to finding that. And you saw how much it meant to him there. Many consecutive holes with struggles on the green for our leader. And although that's not an easy putt, we find Christian here able to secure one on the card and join the very small percentage of players with the birdie, setting it 10%. Another hole here that had more than 80% of the field taking par, both 8 and 9. Difficult to birdie, also kind of difficult to bogey. Yeah, nobody really looking to take that bogey. Especially Rasmus here, as he has some left for this comebacker. 7 meter putt here. Important make there, right in the middle. Very confident stroke. And he's gonna end the front nine at a 5 underscore. Which is a very good front nine. Not incredibly hot, we have seen multiple 5 and 6 under front nines throughout the tournament. But very hot compared to Niklas's. Almost I would call lackluster minus 1 front nine. So a lot of that lead has been cut down and only two strokes separating our top two players right now. And shout out to Puru who is also able to match that five down through the front nine. We see where this has landed our players. With only nine holes remaining, Niklas still retaining the lead although his cushion has shrunk to only two strokes over Rasmus who is four strokes over Puru. We see Lauri Lettinen. Playing four under snuck his way into solo fourth with four players tied in fifth, including Christian on our card. We are so close to the conclusion and we appreciate you joining us here for this exciting final round front nine action. Absolutely nail biting. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. And if you're feeling extra supportive, you can check out the Patreon for MDG as well. Elias, always a pleasure. Thank you, Connor, and thank you, viewers. Hope to see you all on the exciting finish on that back nine.